Hi, I'm Hamish Johnston, editor of PhysicsWorld.com, and I'm here at the University of Alberta in Edmonton at the Canadian Association of Physicists Annual Congress. With me is Rashid Uyad of the University of Calgary, who's an expert in quark nova. So Rashid, what is a quark nova? Hello Hamish. Um, quark nova is the explosive transition of a neutron star to a quark star. In um, standard textbook astronomy, we hear mostly about the supernova. And the supernova is a collapse of massive star. It's an explosion that leaves behind a neutron star. What a quark nova is, it's a second stage where the neutron star, neutron star itself becomes unstable and explodes to form a quark star. So a second and bigger explosion. That's right. The quark nova is a second boom, if you like, which is much more energetic than the supernova itself. So when the neutron star turns into a quark star, it doesn't do it quietly. Right, and so what an astronomer would see is two, would they see two flashes of light, one after another? Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, so one of the things we predicted is that you should see a double hump light curve. The first hump, if you like, is a signature of the supernova itself. So you have light from the supernova, and then followed later by the quark nova, which is a much bigger hump than the first one. And that's something that astronomers have seen? Yes, this is something we predicted in our model uh, many years ago. And uh, luckily, we have seen about a dozen of them right now, and we've been able to fit those double hump light curves. Well. We have been able to predict and fit those light curves in that model. Right. right. And and after the the quark nova happens, you've got a new state of matter, a special kind of star called a, a, a quark star. That, and what what, what 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 would that look like? So that's uh, that's an interesting object. So um, if we go back a little bit to what the neutron star is, a neutron star is an object that's 10 kilometer in radius and it's made of neutrons. But now what's interesting, if we go to look inside the neutrons, each neutron is made up of quarks. Each neutron has three quarks in them. However, it's only up and down quarks. We're all made of neutrons and they're up down quarks. So inside some neutron star, the density is so heavy and so large, the neutrons start to overlap. So when the neutrons overlap, quarks, they, they are free to roam from one neutron to another, they become decontrined. And then something interesting happens. There's a situation where another quark appears, which is a strange quark. And when the strange quark appears, we create, you know, there's a possibility for uh, a new state of matter made of up-down strange quark that's more stable than our matter, the hadronic matter. So the neutron star will, will, would rather be in this UDS state of matter than in UD matter, which is neutron matter. And the explosion, the transition from UD to UDS matter is very explosive and very energetic. And there's some interesting implications for um, measuring distance in the universe, isn't there, to do yeah, type 1a supernova? And I think that's a bit controversial. Let's yes. get that on. Yeah, to say, um, I'm going to be a little bit more careful on how to express our, our results uh, and the implication of what nova to dark energy. So what, uh, in the traditional picture of uh, using type 1a supernova for measuring distances and inferring dark energy, you, people use what's called standard candles. And the standard candle is the explosion of the CO white dwarf. And the way the, the CO white dwarf explodes is, is in a binary system. So you have once a CO white dwarf, its companion, and the CO white dwarf accretes from its companion. When it reaches what's called the Chandra cycle limit, it goes boom. And the companion could be another white dwarf or could be a normal star. And these are standard candles because the mass, the size of the white dwarf, and the way it explodes is very universal. So you could use them as, as a standard candles. What we realize, there's a third channel that can lead to this explosion. If the companion of the white dwarf is a neutron star, and the neutron star goes for nova, then you can still get the CO white dwarf exploding. But then we have an additional energy source, which is the spinning down energy of that quark star. And that screws up your your energy budget. So that makes it brighter then? That's right. Right. So okay. it's not a standard candle anymore. So if these, what we call quark nova 1a, contaminate your sample, you will be actually skewed in the measurement of your distance, especially right. at high redshift. And that could have that could have something to do with how you interpret that data in terms of the acceleration of the That's of correct. The if you rely only on type 1a, we're saying what if, if some of these have been contaminated by quark nova 1a, then you have to be careful. However, there are other evidence of dark energy from varying acoustic oscillation and mm. Planck. And so we're not questioning that. We're just telling the community that using type 1A standard candles is a little bit uh, 
I would say, risky, right? given this other channel where we discovered the part number one A. Well, that's great. Thanks, Rashid. Thanks Thank for speaking to us about, uh, about Port Nova.